Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be showing you how to use the software vCarve Pro to make files that are cuttable on a CNC router, particularly the XCarve by Inventables and the Mach 3 CNC router. Okay, so we're going to open up vCarve Pro here. Okay, and I'm going to show you the file that I made in. Autodesk Inventor before. Here is our design. Okay. I'm going to select the right face here so we can look at it square on. And we are going to be exporting this face here, this whole design. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose Export Face As. And as you can see, I've done this in practice already. So we're going to call this box thingy. I'm going to go to Options. And make sure I have AutoCAD 2004 DXF selected because if I'm using different versions of different software, sometimes they will read an older version better than a newer version. It won't affect the quality of the file. Just make sure it makes it easier for the program to read. I'm going to hit yes to replace that just because I made it before. And I'm just going to minimize Inventor here. Now, here's our user interface for vCarve Pro. I'm going to come to the left-hand side here and hit Create New File. Okay, you're going to be welcomed by this screen, and there'll be a job size menu right here for the X and Y directions. One direction is going to be 6 inches wide. The other direction is going to be 6 inches wide. Okay. And then the thickness of the material is 3 16 of an inch or 0.188. Okay, once I have the job size and the material thickness set, I'm going to hit OK. Because those are the two most important things in that menu. Now, we need to bring in our file that we are going to cut. So I'm going to go to File, Import, Import Vectors. And I'm going to select box thingy. Okay. It's going to pop up right here. And you'll see this pink perforated dashed line at the side. I'm going to double click on that line. And I'm going to drag my drawing right into the center of my workspace here. That's why I make my workspace the same exact size of the material I'm going to be cutting from so I know where all the pieces and parts of the drawing that I made are going to be in real life. Okay, now we're going to add some elements here. Let's say I want a quarter inch hole right here. Okay, as you can see I can figure out where my center point is going to be for the X and Y directions. And I could also give this a radius or a diameter. Okay, I'm going to give it a diameter. And we're going to make that diameter 0.25 of an inch. Okay, so we're going to put two of these holes on this. One is going to be 0.25 of an inch. And we're going to make the other one 0.5 of an inch, half inch. Now, we're also going to hit apply here and close. We are also going to make a text box. Okay, I'm going to just put the simple word bike in here because it's been my favorite test word in the world of vCarve and everything like that lately. I'm going to hit apply and wow, bike! It appears really big. I'm going to double click on the lines on the outside. I'm going to resize it so it fits nice and cleanly into my drawing that I'm making. And I'm going to click out here into outer space so I can see what it looks like. There we go. Pretty basic drawing, but it's going to help us learn how to use this software. Okay, so now since I have my design set, I'm going to come over here to the right hand corners where it says tool paths. I'm going to click it, and you notice how when I move my mouse away, it disappears. I'm going to hit this little pin where it says auto hide at the top right hand corner. Select that and that will just stay frozen in place. It's frozen in time. 
Now, we got a couple things going on here. We're going to choose our profiles that we want to cut, okay? So I'm going to tell you right now that the bike and this slot right here, the bike and this slot, are going to be pocket tools, okay? We're going to use the same up cut flat end mill 16th inch bit for all of these cuts so we do not have to have any tool changes throughout the job okay so i'm going to hit the pocket tool which is right underneath tool path orientation okay and i am going to select how deep we're going to go the start depth letter d is the top of my piece that i'm cutting the cut depth is how deep my tool is going to be okay we're going to go into tools here, and I'm going to make my bit a 0 0.0625, 0 0.0625 bit. That is a 16th inch bit. I'm going to ent that, enter that in for the diameter as well, 625. Make sure you have one decimal point, not two like me. And now I'm going to hit change my feed rate that's the amount the tool will move left and right up and down throughout the piece for each minute so we're going to make that feed rate 40 inches per minute then the plunge rate we are going to make 15 inches per minute okay that sounds super low but we're going to be using a small bit and honestly we do not want to break these bits because they are expensive. I'm going to hit OK, and there we go. Now we just have to make sure we have an offset clear pocket and that the direction is climbing. Okay? We're not going to choose any ramp plunge mate moves. We're just going to go straight into the material, and we're going to call this pocket one okay and we're going to select this as a pocket and then these words as a pocket okay so i'm going to hold control so i can do both of them at once okay and now we are going to hit calculate okay and there we go there's our slot selected and it didn't bring in the the um, letters, so I'll have to do those letters separately, okay? So we're going to repeat that process for the letters. So we're going to hit close here. And we're going to hit pocket again. I'm going to hit new back up here again. And just same process as before. I'm going to make this pocket two, though. Everything's the same. We got to change the tool back to the 0 0.0625 bit that I'm using. 0 0.0625. And we're going to make the feed rate 40, the plunge rate 15. And we're going to hit OK. OK. I'm going to select bike. And now I'm going to hit calculate. OK. So pocket one is the slot, pocket two is the bike symbol, or the bike letters that we have on here. I'm going to hit close. Now, we are going to make a profile tool path. We could drill these holes out with a quarter inch drill bit, but honestly, we're going to save more time by just cutting them out with a flat end mill bit. Okay? So... My end mill that I'm going to be using for these is going to be a, again, a 0 0.0625. So I'm going to just change that right here, 0 0.0625. And again, I'm going to be conservative and make my plunge and feed rate 40, the feed, and 15 for the plunge. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. And we are going to cut on the inside face for this one, okay? Because we're going to be cutting these holes out inside face and make sure everything's correct. 
okay? We're actually going to cut all the way through the material on this one. So it has to be 0.88 of an inch. That's why I have to double check everything. Make sure our tool is 0 0.0625, which it is. I just have to change the name of it to 0 0.0625. And now I'm going to select the items that we want to bore out here. Okay, so it's going to be one circle at a time. Okay, I'm going to hit calculate. And there we go. It's going to cut that out for us right there. And now we're going to do that for the other circle. I'm going to choose profile tool path. It's going to go through all the way. I'm going to make sure. That the bit's the right one, which it's going to be 0 0.0625. Plunge rate is 40. Or excuse me, the feed rate's 40. The plunge rate's 15. And we're going to hit 0 0.0625 for this size of the end mill. We're going to hit OK. And now we are going to choose face that we want to cut. Now we want to be on the inside of this circle, so it takes it out. Okay. And now we are all set. We can make this tool path now for that. And there's our second hole. And now finally is the main part of this whole operation, and that is cutting out the profile. Okay. So we're going to come up here to the profile tool path tool. Switch the tab over. We're going to be choosing the exterior line of our drawing. We are going to make sure that the tool path is, or the tool is a 0 0.0625. Just make sure the diameter is 0 0.0625 as well. And then again, feed rates. That's just, we like to be conservative around here. We're going to make it 40 by a plunge rate of 30, or excuse me, 15. Here's 625, awesome sauce. We're gonna hit okay. Make sure it's climbing. It's gonna do it for two passes, okay? And now we're gonna add our tabs, okay? I'm going to use four on this one there, one there, one there, finally one there. I'm going to hit close, and now our part is ready for cutting or actually making the tool path for cutting. Okay, so now I'm going to hit calculate. This one is going to be on the outside rather than the inside, so we get full dimensions. And there we go. We're all set. It's one, two, three, four, five operations long, but it will all do it in one go. It'll just switch to each step each time it's done. Now, we're going to come down here to where it says Save Toolpath. We're going to hit Save Toolpath, and we're going to output all visible toolpaths to one file. Now, if we were using a Mach 2 or a Mach 3 mill, we'd use Mach 2 3 ATC arcs inched text. Okay. But for this case, we are going to scroll all the way down to where it says X carve. We're going to choose X carve inch. Okay. And we're going to choose save tool path. And now you're going to save that tool path within your folder, okay, on your USB. So I'm going to call this box thingy. Tool path. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. So if I come to my folder here, Elkins FDDP, we're going to just open 
that toolpath that we just made. It's a G code file. Okay, we can open it up in a WordPad, and there is all our code to make this thing happen. It just keeps on going and going and going. Okay, this is thousands and thousands of lines of code. So that is how we prepare a file in the software vCarve. Okay, and either get it ready for cutting on an XCarve or a Mach 3 CNC router, depending on what your flavor of machining is in your department. Okay. But this will get you started so you can actually start making some really cool, easy parts. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.